Welcome back. The last is yet to be heard about the crisis rocking the Imo State House of Assembly. And the Deputy Speaker, Ogunna Uzo, uh, that'd be Ozuribo, has resigned his position as the Deputy Speaker. Already, majority of the members have passed a vote of no confidence on the Speaker, Achomihim, and asked him to step aside on the heels of misconduct, misappropriation, negligence, and subduing legislative activities. But the Speaker has described the actions of the lawmakers as illegal and cannot hold water. Let's analyze this further. Chinedu of for the pro tem speaker of the Imo State House of Assembly joins us by Skype from Oweri, the Imo State capital. I want to thank you so much indeed for joining us at this time. If we can uh, establish that link now. Uh, okay, I understand that he's on the phone rather. Now, some have questioned the intent of the actions of the lawmakers from the viewpoint of proximity to the winding down of the Ace Assembly and asking why did they suspend the speaker? Do you have an answer to that? Well, thank you very much for having me, and I appreciate your call. And uh, good evening to all your listeners. Uh, it's never too late to do the right thing. And this is purely a legislative action. Uh, 22 members of the Emo State House of Assembly signed a notice of impeachment on the speaker, bordering on lack of confidence, and inability to run the house properly uh, through legal procedure. So for those who are talking of timing, uh, maybe it's the right time to do so based on the circumstances and the uh, speaker's needs. And uh, if you really want me to explain further as to what happened and why it happened, then I'd be glad to do so. Now, why did it take this long to raise the allegations? I mean, if you say that uh, it's about the right time now, now is even the best time, according to you. Why did it take this long to raise these allegations? No, it's not a matter of how long it took. You know, there is always an internal mechanism of uh, resolving issues. We've always had issues. We're just human beings. Uh, we've always uh, uh, questioned the manner and way the speaker ran the house uh, without... Uh, Married and without consultation with uh, certain members of the House. This is not a military dictatorship. This is a democratic House. And the Speaker serves uh, at the pleasure of members of the House of Assembly. The speaker is actually the member of the House of Assembly. It's just that the members got together and elected him as Speaker. So, in doing his job, he ought to and must carry his members along. The Speaker has, has a habit of not doing that. And so, I think the matter came to an head when he continuously, repeatedly flouted the laws of the House of Assembly. And that is why we have to do what we do. Now, you have based uh, some of these um, uh, allegations against him as misconduct, misappropriation, negligence, subduing legislative activities, all of that you've said that uh, uh, the Speaker is, is doing to the House at this moment. But he said that your argument holds no water. Well, what do you expect him to say? That it holds water? Let me just point this out. We have 22 confirmed signatures out of 27 members of the House of Assembly. If the Speaker loses the confidence of 22 members out of 27, what does that tell you? Uh, if he thinks he has the members on his side, let him produce the signatures and let him produce the members he has on his side. If he does not hold water, now we've met within the House of Assembly, the Speaker acted uh, the way the Speaker should not act. He failed to carry his members along. And why do you think 22 men and women sat down and wrote their signatures publicly? that the speaker is not doing well and that we need to change the legislature. So uh, that's the defense I expect him to put up. And he's entitled to it. But this is not personal. It is not between me and the speaker. It's between the speaker and members of the House of Assembly. Uh, I, don't, I don't want it to be personalized. I'm just a, a servant of the people. I just have the mandate of 22 members of the House of Assembly. And that is it. So if the speaker has an issue with anybody, he shouldn't be me. He should be talking to his members. I'm just one out of 27. So has he called the members together? Does he have the ability to call the members together? If he's someone to meet with the members attend, that is how you know the class of the speaker. 
And if the speaker is unable to do that, then he's unable to conduct the business of the house, he's unable to call himself speaker for the House of Assembly. Well, even though a lot of people will argue with you, say that uh, you've been there, all of you were there and watching all of this happen and then waiting until when the Eighth Assembly is wrapping up before you bring up, bring up this, uh, these issues. But uh, that aside, is it constitutional to elect a pro tem speaker? Yes, it is. It's the House rules. Is that what the, the House rule says? Yes, that's what the House rule says. The House, the house rule says in the absence if the speaker is in pitch or suspended, and in the absence of a deputy speaker, members, majority members of the House, can sit and elect a proton speaker to run the business of the House until such a time the speaker will be elected. And that is what we do. It's in the House rules and it's constitutional. And besides, when the majority of members in the House speak and take a resolution, it is binding, it is lawful. Impeachment is carried out inside the chambers with the mates present. People are just, uh, people don't understand the process. This is not an impeachment, this is a suspension and a notice of impeachment. And so anybody who is arguing that, oh, you, you don't have the mates, it wasn't done within the confines of the House of Assembly, they are missing the point. Impeachment happens inside the House of Assembly with the mayor. Okay, yes. now, 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 now um, let me pick you up on this one. Some believe that the House is actually taking this action because they want to get some personal entitlements from the government before it winds down. Is that the case? No, no, that is not true at all. We just want to put legislature in the coalition court when the government has been listed. That is not true at all. Uh, why would why we start now if we want to attack them? Is the speaker not the one in the house for three and uh, maybe nine, ten months? That has absolutely nothing to do with it. The speaker did not carry members along during deliberation. The speaker unilaterally ruled on a matter, refusing any member to contribute to a very important and weighty issue. He adjourned the house and turned off the generating set of the entire complex, plunging it into darkness. And this is what it's all about. And we're saying, Mr. Speaker, we're also human beings. We are elected representatives of our people. And okay, that, that's a good place to let it rest, Honorable Chidi, or for the pro tem speaker of the Imo State House Assembly. Many thanks indeed for talking to us here on State of the Nation. And to you for being part of the show. Many thanks indeed for watching. I am Gimba Ubar. Bye for now. Central Bank of Nigeria, the CVN, for a second term of five years. This followed the adoption of the report of the Senate Committee on Banking, Insurance and Other Financial Institutions presented by Senator Rafiu Adebayo during Thursday's plenary. What does this mean to the country? Will his second tenure usher in a stronger naira to the dollar? Honorable Mohamed Kazore, APC Jigawa State, fails the president was ill-advised on the reappointment. We'll focus on this in just a moment. Data feeds are coming through in one place simultaneously on all our social media platforms, channelstv.com and on youtube.com forward slash channelsweb. You can follow us right now on m.channelstv.com and on Facebook as well. We've got all our social media platforms covered. Be part of the show. Tweet at Gimba Umar CTV. Use the hashtag State of the Nation. Let's get your thoughts in. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has postponed the governorship elections in Kogi and Bayelsa states by two weeks and will now be held on November 16, 2019. INEX Commissioner of Information and Voter Education, Festus Okoye, explained that the decision followed several appeals by critical stakeholders in Bayelsa state. Will it be a departure from the barrage of low comments on the conduct of the general elections by the umpire? Are there lessons learned from the just-concluded elections to make the Kogi and Bayelsa state elections better? Will the Commission ensure materials and other logistics get to the racks early for the commencement of the entire process and announce results in record time? 
Now the Deputy Speaker of the Imo State House of Assembly, Ugonna Uzoribo, has resigned. He explained in a letter that he was resigning to enable him to function well as a member-elect of the National House of Representatives who will analyze the issues therein in the course of the show as well. It's prime time here in Lagos and this is State of the Nation. Welcome everyone in Nigeria and the rest of the world. I am Gimba Umar and this is State of the Nation. On May the 8th, President Muhammad Buhari informed the Senate in a statement that he has decided to nominate the CVN Governor Godwin Emefele for a second term. Emefele's reappointment came one day after the Senate committee cleared him during the screening session where he was and uh, was asked questions relating to the nation's economy. Is he truly deserving of a second tenure? Claytus Obo is a member of the House of Reps and Philip Agwese, an economist. Uh, they both joined me from Abuja studios. I want to thank both of you gentlemen for coming on the show at this time. Let's begin with you, Honorable. Uh, you share the views of President Muhammad Buhari of reappointing Godwin Emefele as CBN governor, I understand. But do you think he deserves a second term in office? Well, if I am to respond, let me say clearly that uh, on the basis of the rising uh, portfolio and the rising impetus of the Nigerian economy under a robust uh, policy, uh, on agriculture and a few other areas, I do think that MFLA, for the purposes of stability, for the purposes of the political economy of our country, and for the, uh, the, the, the foreign exchange reserve that he has, uh, I mean, foreign reserve uh, portfolio that we have acquired over this period, uh, heading over uh, 40 billion, I do think that uh, MFLA more than deserves a second tenor. And I think the president got this one right. And I do think that even his harshest critics will agree on that, especially his interventions on agriculture, his interventions uh, in the area of production, and, of course, the general uh, uh, stability of the Naira over the last three years, hovering, as it were, even though there are fundamental disagreements over that area of uh, uh, the rate of the Naira. The Naira rating against the dollar and, uh, has been ameliorated, and I do think at the final stages of implementation with China, I think that was the only curative uh, measure that had been taken in order to stop the Naira from further uh, going downwards and deteriorating against the dollar. I do think that to that extent, policies and implementation and strategies and tactics initiated by MFLA makes him eminently qualified for this affirmation, confirmation and reinstatement. Mr. Agwese, he just mentioned uh, the area of uh, the foreign exchange rates and how that is uh, all unfolding under his administration. But uh, do you think that uh, we could have had a stronger error against the dollar uh, by the CBN governor, considering that uh, it has largely remained stable at uh, 360 at the open market? Clearly, this is one area in which I have differed over the period against the uh, international no, no, I, I, I'll come back to you. I, I'll come back to you on this. I was just asking Mr. Agwese on this one. Do you think that the 360 to the dollar today as it stands is well enough to set the economy on a good footing going forward in Emefile's second term? I maintain that no, no. I do not agree that I believe... Hello? Yes, the question is for Mr. Agwese, not for you. Hello? We 
My, my second guest, I'm asking my second guest the question now. I don't know how the lines are, are, are behaving there, but if he can hear me, the question is to my second guest who is sitting right there with you. Yes, you. Uh, what's your views to the issue of the stability of the Naira against the dollar looking forward? And um, perhaps one that will further the, the acceptance of Godwin Mfele as the governor of the CBN for a second term. Yes, I want to first of all start by thanking President Muhammadu Buhari for that well-informed decision and to equally say that uh, today we have a predictable country, a predictable economy, and uh, it goes uh, to the extent that we also have a predictable uh, lifespan for the people of our country. Uh, I think Mr. President, to a very large extent, has done well. And uh, to your question about the stability of the Naira, uh, it goes a long way to show how robust and uh, how good, you know, we have been able to recover the country from those, you know, who first uh, uh, helped this country to uh, strangulation. Uh, we have been able to take back our country. Uh, we have been able to take back our country from middle class, ethnic bigots, you know, and people, you know, who for whatever for selfish personal gains, you know, in time past uh, have taken this country for a ride. Uh, I think uh, the, the, the reappointment of Mr. Emefile by President Muhammad Dubari is just an endorsement, you know, of the masses belief in his leadership that, yes, it is time for Nigeria, you know, to rule their country because Mr. President is one who is actually seen as one of the people. So the movement of the people for a country uh, by Nigerians for Nigeria has just been confirmed. Even though we can rightly say that the journey started about four years ago, uh, I think with this uh, decision by Mr. President to return Mr. Gordon Emefile, which we also believe will be extended to other critical sectors of, the, of, of our national life, is in the right direction. And uh, it is very, very healthy for our democracy. It is healthy for our country. It is also very healthy for stability, global stability, in terms of how people view our country from outside. And I think for the first time, we are going to have uh, an inflow of direct foreign investment because the world cannot clearly see that Nigeria has taken a part. We're on the right path. Okay, uh, I, I, I get all of that. But if I may just butt in, the, the CBN boss uh, is kicking off his second tenure with worsening inflation rates. The pessimists say that the economy is not growing. Population is expected to hit 450 million people by the year 2050. That's according to the CBN government itself. Uh, things will be tough, he says also. But should we be concerned as a people? Uh, uh, even as an individual, everyone should be concerned about his life uh, at the cost of development. Uh, what uh, exactly Mr. Gordon Mephile has said, uh, I think is not in any way different from what uh, other analysts and economists, you know, and uh, strategists said in the past. I think the difference between that time and now is the fact that we have a listening president, a president who is also concerned about the future of the country, and a president who has appointed people in high responsibilities, and a president that is ready to listen to this person that he has appointed. In the past, we had some of these postulations from ministers, from governors of the CBN, and no government actually took them seriously because they saw them just as figurehead. Uh, they had people who were actually running those things. But today, we have a president, uh, for instance, who would appoint uh, security chiefs and listing you know, to these persons and know exactly what they are doing, uh, their plans. We have a president who now listing you know, to his CBN governor and I think as a matter of fact, it is just right for all of us as citizens of this great nation to buckle up and be ready because hard times, of course, will always be there. But it depends on how prepared we are. Uh, the, the dwindly state of the economy before 2014, well, of course, was in the newspapers, it was known. But what effort was put in place at that time you know, to ensure that we didn't slide into the abyss? But today, uh, I think it, the, the situation is different. And if you look at it critically, uh, we, we, we have uh, measures in place. Uh, today, we're already uh, 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 staying away from relying, uh, uh, living on an economy that is dependent on crude oil. We are not diversifying our economy into non-oil okay, uh, products. If, if we if have agriculture that is already booming if in the I'm north, a, a region again, you know, that many uh, people... Uh, uh, let's, let's, uh, uh, let, let me swing it over to, to Honorable, uh, and let's talk about corruption. Now, the APC lawmakers from, uh, lawmaker rather, from Jigawa State has disagreed with the reappointment uh, of this um, 
uh, at this capacity by Mr. President, saying that the likes of Dasuki Deziani, accused of corrupt practices, received funds they allegedly misappropriated through the CBN under Emifile's watch. What's your view to this capacity, his capacity, to fight in corruption? I do, think, I do think that this is a complete distortion of facts. First of all, if the CBN governor demonstrates, don't forget the, the, the circumstances under which Sanusi left CBN. It was the beginning of this huge fraud and humongous diversion of monies meant for the battle in the, uh, in the Northeast that led to most of these disagreements between the CBN governor then, Sanusi, and the government of the day at that time. When MFLA came in, he was to do a damage control. And that damage control couldn't have commenced at a point where most releases from Central Bank were already signed and already appropriated and given to the National Security Advisor. Therefore, if you now begin to accuse an officer of the Federal Republic for carrying out his lawful duties, indeed, by, under the signature of the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic and his appointer, then that clearly we are misinforming the public and misdirecting our attention. Secondly, let me make it very clear that in MFLA, if you remember, Nigeria went into recession with other oil-producing countries that have mono-economies like uh, Venezuela, like Angola. They have not recovered. Under MFLA's watch, we recovered, and we are not just recovered, from an anticipated $65 to a, to a, a, a barrel of, of oil, we went down to as low as 28.32, at the very highest under this regime in the early days between 2016 and 2017. So MFLA has shown sufficient wizardry and mastery of running an economy of this nature, which was mono, monocultural, monoeconomic, and turned around the entire thing. And today, we are talking rise between Zampara and Lagos. Today, we are talking about the, uh, the, the, the white gold, which is the return to cotton and the textile industry and all that. So productivity and production, the refineries, especially the encouragement of people like Dangote, is going on. I do think that we must have to give credit to this. And rather than okay. divert, uh, uh, divert attention to the issues of corruption uh, against a, a, gov a governor of the central uh, bank, all right, all right. has done so well. In just 30 seconds, let, let me get your views, Mr. Agbese, on this one. What would you say is the way forward now that uh, MFLA will be running the next five years as the governor of the CBN? Well, first, I would like to talk, uh, let me just briefly touch on those accusing uh, Mr. Emefele of corruption and the one that has appointed Mr. Emefele for a second term in office. All of us, we know the history of President Muhammad Buhari as a man who ordinarily for no, just for no reason would ever bend, you know, to satisfy anybody. I'm very, very sure if he had done this before the 2015 ele uh, 2019 election, so many Nigerians would have said, that Mr. President had done this to placate a region of the country. And this is a man who has courageously done this, I believe. Mr. President is a very diligent person. He has carried out his due diligence, and that has been reaffirmed and confirmed again by the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Okay. The Rakoros Senate that has never agreed with any policy okay. of the um, federal government for the oh. first time. You know, we, saw them we, we, we just wanted you to wrap that up in 30 seconds, but um, uh, I'm afraid the time is against us. But I must thank both of you for talking to us on State of the Nation. Honorable Clayton Zobo, member of the House of Representatives, and Philip Agbese, an economist as well. Uh, thank you so much indeed for talking to us. When State of the Nation returns, we'll change our focus to the unfolding developments in Imo State House of Assembly. Stay with us.